Hi, welcome to this tutorial on using the commutative binomial probability tables. And these tables can generally be found in the back of a statistics textbook or in a book of tables. Now this is a typical example on the right here. The tables give the probability of being less than or equal to an observed value x where the random variable big X here is distributed binomially where you have n trials and the probability of success is p. Now the tables give a few values of p across the top here and a few values of n in this column down here. And I've tried to highlight them because obviously the tables that you see here are quite small. But it's just to give you an overall view at the moment. The values of p across the top range from 0.05 to 0.50 and they go up in steps of 0.05. And the values of n are limited to 5, 10 and 20 in this set of tables. But you can find in other tables different values of p and other values of n. So obviously check this out in your textbook or in the formula book that you're using. So what I want to show you now is how we can use these tables to simplify the working of some binomial probabilities. Now what I've done is enlarge the tables just to help us see the values. Now for example let's say we had x was distributed binomially and we had say five trials and probability of success was 0 0.20. Now remember that the tables only work out the probability that x is less than or equal to an observed value little x. Now what I'm going to do is list out the values that the random variable x can be in this example. There's five trials so therefore x, the number of successes, can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. I do that because it's going to help to illustrate what I'm going to show you in the way of probabilities now. So for instance, suppose we were asked to work out the probability that x was less than or equal to say 4. How would I do this? Well, my observed value is 4, so I can read this value directly from the tables. All I need to do is look up n is 5, which is this one here, and then look up my x value of 4. So I just go along the 4 row here, and I see under 0 0.20 for p, the value 0.9997. So the answer is... 0.9997. Now suppose I had to work out a probability of being equal to a number, like for instance x equaling 2. How could I do this? Well since the tables only work out the probability of being less than or equal to a number, to get the probability that x equals 2, I could work out the sum of the probabilities 0, 1 and 2, that's the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. If I know that sum, I need to now just subtract the sum of the probabilities from 0 to 1. So I subtract the probability of the sum of the probabilities from 0 to 1, x being less than or equal to 1. And then by using the tables with x equaling 2, just go under n equals 5, look along the 2, under 0 0.20 for the probability p, and what I find that I get is that number, 0.9421. So just write that in here as 0.9421, and then subtract the value of the probability x is less than or equal to 1. So just look along 1 here, and we see the value 0 0.7373. So just need to subtract that away, 0 0.7373. And if we do subtract that, what you get is 0 
2048. Next, we could work out the probability that x is less than a number, say less than 3. How do we do less than? Well, again, our tables only give less than or equal to, so if we want to be less than 3, then we need 0, 1, and 2. So that is exactly the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So looking that up in the tables again, you see that it is the value 0 0.9421. So we can write that in then as equal to 0 0.9421. So that's how we handle less than a particular value. So what about handling, say, more than a value? Let's look at the probability of x being, say, more than 1. Well, if we want to be more than 1, that is 2, 3, 4, and 5, to get round this problem, all I do is I do 1 minus, because 1 is the sum of all the probabilities, not 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if I subtract from that, okay, the probability of being less than or equal to 1, that's 0 and 1, I would have the probability of being more than 1. OK, so all we need to do now is 1 minus, look up the value for the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. So go to the tables, look along here, and you'll see that the value is 0.7373. So just write that in as 0 0.7373. Do that subtraction, and what you should find you get is 0 0.2627. Next, we could be greater than or equal to a number. So we'll just do this one, the probability that x is greater than or equal to, say, 3, for instance. How would I do this? Well, greater than or equal to 3 is 3, 4, and 5. So all I need to do is do 1, which is the sum of all the probabilities, and subtract the probability of x being less than or equal to, well, it's got to be 2. If we want 3, 4, and 5, then we've got to do 1 minus 0, 1, and 2. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. That would be 1 minus, and the probability that x is less than or equal to 2. Just go along the 2 row, and you'll see it is 0 0.9421. So that would be 1 minus 0 0.9421. And if we work that out, we get 0 0.0579. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial where I've shown you now how we can use the cumulative binomial probability tables to simplify the working of some binomial distributions.